What's going on, Ponzo Houdini? Hey, what's up, gang? How you, my guy? Doing good. Welcome to the show, Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max. Buffalo, New York's own Ponzo Houdini joins me here for Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max. Live 265, iHeartRadio. His new album, Rituals, is available everywhere now. Make sure you go stream it, download it, support it. He's one of the real ones out here, and he's doing it up big. He's doing Absolutely. the movies. He's doing the reality shows. He's doing the music. What, what's something that you're, what's in that, before we get into the album rituals, what's up, what's another lane you're looking to take over in 2024? Because you're, you're someone that's looking to just come and get with yours in the entertainment business. Man, I just want to get the sponsorships and brand deals popping. You know, I had a couple in the past recent years, but now I want to get more being that I'm building a lot of leverage and a lot of uh, traction in the world. And again, my popularity is blowing up. I want to be able to lock in with these companies, and these brands, and help promote their business. And, you know, we can partner and shit like that. Mm. Who, who do you think would be a perfect match for you as far as a sponsor goes? Who's someone that you're kind of uh, eyeing? Uh, right now, I'm uh, in the talks with Prize Picks right now for mm. a sponsorship. And uh, working on a partnership with them. Um, they've been big in, you know, different, I mean, platforms that they partner with right now. And then, shit, I'm just open. You know what I'm saying? Long as... You know, it aligns with my brand. I mean, I'm not going to do nothing that I don't, I mean, take part in, in in my personal life just to make a buck. But if it aligns with my brand and my beliefs, I'm ready to work. And let's talk about the the brand that you've been building up so far. How did you kind of gain the knowledge of being independent and just doing everything on your own? Because you, you're really doing it off of your own back. Absolutely. So, you know, I've been, I've been in the music rapping for 19 years now. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been building it. You know what I mean? Spending my bread, blood, sweat, and tears, in and out of prison, in and out the streets. You know what I'm saying? So it, it took a lot to get to where I'm at. And, um, you know, the movies, it's, it's been about six years. Um, I did my first movie six years ago. And then uh, three years ago is like when I professionally became an actor, a professional actor. So Pure and, finesse. Yeah. Yep, yep, pure finesse. And uh, my first one was actually They Clone Tyrone with Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx, yeah. First, yeah, that was the first, like, yo, all right, this is something I want to do. You know what I mean? It goes along with the rap because it's all entertainment. Mm -hmm. and, and how was it being on the set there? Because especially around then, I think that's kind of when you realize, because it can be, sets are grueling. People don't realize mm -hmm. that. They see that all the stuff going on, because I've heard you speak Absolutely. about it, like, man, 30 seconds, and it took, like, hours and hours and hours yeah. to do. People don't realize what really goes on. I would say, man, it was twelve hours. It was twelve hours we filmed for me to be in a motherfucking movie for twelve. But I would say thirty seconds, if that. People don't realize that it takes dedication, and you have to love what you do because the majority of the time when you're on a movie set, you're sitting around. You're sitting around. You're just standing there, and then I mean, the lunches are good, but then there's sometimes that the they really don't have great lunch. So you you're kind of just like, all right, I'm gonna eat once the set's over. But you're waiting twelve hours. There's no doubt about definitely, it. Definitely, yeah. The major sets do a good job. Like for like actually today, I just wrapped up like just now. That's where I'm coming from. Filming my own movie, Hustler Dreams. You know what I'm saying? I EP'd it. I put up the bag. I'm starring in the movie. You know what I'm saying? And it's, we just wrapped up today. And you know what I'm saying? I and right now I'm out to eat taking them out to dinner to, it was a rap party you know what i'm saying oh that's, so that's big really congratulations on that it, it, talk to me it, about bro. building up because you have your own production team so talk to me how yeah. you got the own production team together man shout out to my uh camera person you know what i mean it's actually a female and you know she worked with a team of all females it's an all-female crew and uh they all are professionals they've worked in hollywood since they were kids they've worked on netflix and ran netflix productions they ran tyler perry Productions. So they have the gainful knowledge and professionalism and shit. I'm like, I've been in 13 movies in the last three years. So it's time for me to start doing my own movie so I can start reaping the real benefits instead of waiting for somebody to say, hey, I want to book you or send an audition tape and they paid me a stipend for being in a movie. I want to put up the bag and I'm going to collect the residuals and then go take it to different platforms and try to broker a deal to get them either license or purchase or distribute the movie and try to make some real money. Mm -hmm. that's real and you're going to get all the, the residuals from that and, and you're right you have to Absolutely. go out and make your own opportunities because not everyone's going to yeah. see the real talent I, I always say it they passed on brady too that's for all the mm -hmm. people out there that know that they're great and they're right. getting passed up on is that they pass on brady too and you have to go out mm -hmm. there and make your own opportunities and you're doing Absolutely. that right there so how did you find carolyn how did you and carolyn get together because she's your agent she was the one getting you into all these opportunities yeah, especially with the tyler perry show so how did you mm -hmm. get connected with carolyn well, my homie, uh, shout out to my uh, homeboy, man, Horsey. You know what I mean? He 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 um he up in Niagara Falls, New York. That's my homeboy. 
Um, you know, he connected me with her because he was down here working with her when he was in Atlanta. And when I was moving here, bro, like, yo, man, lock in with my peoples. You know, she heavy in the, the movie and entertainment. Get with her. And then me and Carolyn locked in. And, you know, it's been a blessing ever since. You know, Carolyn has done a lot to help me with my acting career. You know what I mean? Helping me become a professional actor, getting all my uh, profiles together, going to acting school, getting professional headshots. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Helping me get on all these big platforms. And she got me on Jamie Foxx. Uh, they clone Tyrone. Love and hip hop, you know, a whole a bunch of big productions. So, you know, what I mean, shout out to Carolyn. Yeah, just shout out to her and everything that she's doing, and and you guys are going to keep doing it big in Atlanta. You you spoke That's about it before in an interview I was hearing about where you call Atlanta Black Hollywood. Do you think that L.A. is kind of more moving away from? giving a light to black entertainers and just black art. Cause we don't get movies. I mean, we had like John Singleton with boys in the hood and we, we saw that we don't get those movies anymore. Is that kind of what you're hinting at? And do you think Los Angeles isn't for the culture anymore? I just think, um, and it ain't even just black entertainment. All entertainment now is coming to Atlanta. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like they film in a bunch of movies, not even just, the, uh, you know what I mean? The urban they filming all a lot of big productions in Atlanta. And I feel like Hollywood is dying out. Like, I feel like Hollywood is actually dying out. Um, all the big time gatekeepers are all losing their positions. I mean, quote unquote, if you ain't paying attention, look at the Diddy's, look at the Russell Simmons, look at the, who, who, who all the people <laughs> at the top of the food, <laughs> the top of the food chain is about to be some new elite that's in position that's about to be running it. So, you know, hopefully I'm, you know, next up to be on that list but i guarantee i won't be doing any of the stuff those guys partake in no, <laughs> no sir. Wait, wait. I, I mean it, the the news is inevitable i mean i, I really don't want to give it too much time because i don't like seeing the right. downfall of somebody no, absolutely but no definitely. what's your thoughts on just because it's a big thing and hip diddy is yeah. one of the major faces in hip-hop i mean at the end of the day i can't I, I don't know what happened i don't know what he did i mean i've heard rumors since i've been doing music of things but those rumors. I mean, I don't know the man personally. Yeah. I don't know what he's done. So I can't condemn a man if I don't if I haven't seen what's been going on. I know the news, they gonna take narratives and spit it for likes and views and clickbait. So they gonna run with a bad story. I don't know what is going on, but I know it sucks to see somebody that's been a legend in the game for so long, you know what I mean, taking a fall and going out this way. But they always say, man, you piss off the wrong people, you know, it could get ugly for you. Yeah. No matter how, you know what I'm saying, it could get ugly for you. So. <laughs> You know, I just feel like he pissed off the wrong per people, a group of people, and uh, now he's paying for it. Yeah, no, he is, and if he really did you got to think, it's all stuff that happened years, years, 20, 30 years, you know what I'm saying, 20, 30 years ago, and it's just all of a sudden coming up now, you have to think, like, that disagreement with the wrong people, man, that puts you in position can really, you know what I'm saying, you got to know who you're dealing with, one of the mm. 48 laws of power. That That's real. That that really is. I mean, you're you're a true inspiration for a lot of people out there because I did hear about your story. You kind of being because you, you're from Buffalo originally. Yeah. I did hear that you were on the top ten most wanted list at one time. So when did oh, you realize to turn your life around? When did, was it? When you were in one of your stints, one serving time, that you said I'm going to come out and do the music, or was it kind of just like I was doing the music, then I got caught up in some stuff, and then when I came back out, I said that's enough. Well, actually, um. I've been doing music the whole time, like, when I jumped off the port. Well, I would say um, 2006 is when I started rapping, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was actively in the streets. And at that time, I was rapping about what I was really doing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, because I'm hearing all these other people. I'm like, shit, we really doing this. So, I know I can make it because we really doing this. You know what I'm saying? So, but not knowing that, you know, that created a, a, a cycle of me going back and forth to jail. And um, 10 years ago today, actually, around this time, 10 years ago, around this time, I went on the run. Buffalo's 10 most wanted. And then, you know, I turned myself in. I buried like $30,000 in the backyard. And then I turned myself in after, you know what I'm saying, I was done being on the run. And then, uh, you know, I did my bid. And on that last bid, it's like, this is the last one. I can't keep coming back here resetting my life because it's like I build up my buzz in the music shit. And it Oh, I go to back to jail for being in the streets. And then it's like the money that I'm thinking I'm getting, I'm really not getting that much money. It ain't like I'm a gajillionaire off this shit, you know? Like, and then the money that I'm getting, and then, you know what I'm saying? When I get a spurt of a large lump sum of money off of this shit, it's like, 
when you go to jail, when you do the math, that you you lost. You know what I'm saying? You lost. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Overall, you know, I I don't regret nothing that happened, but, you know, I wish, you know, that, uh you know, better things could have been able to be provided for me in, in my life to where I didn't have to do that shit because, you know, that shit ain't nothing to be glorifying, you know? No, I, I get it. And, you know, I have family members who are in the streets as well, and you spoke about right. it just that – Time is more important than money because you can Absolutely. you can always get the money back. You can't get the time back. That's a fact, bro. That's yeah. a fact, my guy. Yeah, it, it's crazy. And you, you know what's so interesting? Because when we look at the movie Conflicted, you know, Benny, uh, you got the ties there with Buffalo. And you do have the Buffalo accent. I just interviewed a couple of Buffalo artists. And it's just all yeah. everyone that comes from Buffalo has that same Buffalo accent. You can tell that they're from Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, you can say you were like, dang. You, you you know that is you know what I mean like we still New York State but you know what's the difference between us and the boroughs and people be like man why you don't sound like I said you know we still New York but you know we just a little bit on the west coast of New York you know what I'm saying yeah it, you you've spoken about it about Buffalo and New York and it, it's they're kind of in now would you say Buffalo itself is in confliction or is it just the boroughs and Buffalo are in confliction with each other. Um, I mean, over the years, it's, you know, always been that, you know, if you ain't a part of the boroughs, you're not real New York. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, like I done been upstate in prison with people from the boroughs. I done been on tour. I done did songs. You know what I'm saying? I done, I got a bunch of homies that's from the boroughs and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, over the years, they thought we was just farming until they really learned that, yo, there's some shit going on out there in Buffalo. There's some dudes that's really putting it down in Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know what I mean? Now it's like, you know, they understand it now, you know, and it's kudos because, shit, we all trying to put on for this this state of New York. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get some collaborations with you and Benny and the Griselda guys? Are we going to get – are we working towards that soon? Um, Shout out to them, but I think we in two different lanes of music, you know what I'm saying? Like, they focus more on, like, the 90s, gritty, you know what I'm saying, boom bat. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, and that's not really my, my lane. You but you can saying? rap like, though. That's the thing. That's yeah, I can, I can rap, but I just, me personally, I'm not a fan of those beats. I'm not a fan mm. of the beat selection. Like I love the bars that them boys got because they, they talking that real Buffalo shit, but I'm just not a fan of the beat selection. Like them, the, 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 you know what I mean? I'm, that's just not my way, but you know, they putting on for my city and I appreciate everything that they did to open doors for people in my city. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if they didn't directly come pull a nigga in and say, hey, man, I'm going to put you on, just them doing what they're doing, shine light on our city for them to be, you know what I'm saying, for people to look at us and be like, yo, man, who else coming out of Buffalo? You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. Yeah, Buffalo's got a lot of talent, even in, in the past history with Brian McKnight and definitely, definitely. Rick James. They, they got a rich mm -hmm. history of music. And we true. got the new album Rituals out now. You, you mm -hmm. kind of reference the title as just what people do in their everyday life. And just how yeah, they get ritual. up in the morning if they go to work. I mean, I don't know if it, – because it's so – this is the dream lifestyle, what we do. Mm -hmm. we do right. I do Definitely. my show, and you do you go and act, and, and you do your music. It, mm -hmm. I think people get stuck in the way of life where they're kind of – do you think lost in a way? Because I feel as though if you yeah. just – it is a ritual, but it's like – if you think about the cycle of just getting up, going to work, going home, going to sleep, get that's just like – it's crazy. A ritual you, for uh, failure, uh, right? It's yeah. different rituals. Like you can have a routine for failure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you don't even know it. And there's a lot of us has been programmed to the society of, you know what I'm saying? Go to school, graduate, go to college, get a good job, pay it, pay, be in debt for the rest of your life, basically. And live paycheck to paycheck and retire when you're 65. That's a horrible lifestyle. Horrible. horrible. I never wanted yeah. that. That's why I always took risks because I never wanted that type of life. You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to be, you know what I mean, living paycheck to paycheck, watching my kids, you know what I mean, wonder why they can't do certain things other kids is doing and, you know what I mean, not enjoying life, you get what I mean? Because I watch my family go through that, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm like I'm like the uh, the generational curse breaker in my family, the person that made it out, you know what I'm saying, from the poverty that we, you know what I'm saying, and that's what I'm building right now. I'm trying to continue to build what I've been putting on so I could be able to go back and, you know what I mean, put something different in my family's future for the for the ancestors, you know what I'm saying, to, to represent my ancestors that passed and, you know, the, the generations to come. I want to be able to set something up for, man, when they when they get here, man, Ponzo took over the world and created a platform for them to, you know what I'm saying, run it like the Rothschilds, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? 
<laughs> and you're doing it, man. And, and you're you're yeah. showing the people that you could do this independently. Because I tell people all the time, got to take risks. But a lot of times people don't believe they're not dreamers. They don't believe in. Right. I mean, look, look at everything you accomplished. 13 movies. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's exactly. crazy when you really think of it. Then you got the music going on. But you then you got the reality yeah. show because you took last yeah. year off with the with the yeah. music. So now you're back That's on the right. music wave. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Music is my passion. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just got a newfound passion for movies and reality TV because it's all entertainment. And all of those things help my music. You know what I mean? Like the movies that I've been in, I, my music is in most of those movies. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I was able to get my music, yeah, I was able to get my music in most of those movies. Like I got like four or five movies that's slated to drop by the summertime. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just just a lot of work that's been put in that, you know what I mean? It's all paying off at the same time. And I'm just blessed because I'm going to be honest, it's not easy. No, not easy, but if it was easy, then everybody would do it. So, you know, what I mean, anything worth having ain't gonna never be easy, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. I'd rather be doing this than struggling in a warehouse factory job for 12 hours a day making minimum wage. Oh, you're and, and that's so real. What, what, what do you think needs to change? In my opinion, they got to raise minimum wage, but if you raise minimum wage, yeah. I always say it. Because I see people, because when you hear these stories, maybe people wouldn't want to go on the block and, and sell drugs right, and right. do illegal activities. Definitely. This country, you kind of force people into situations like that in a way. I mean, they'll say, oh, well, you they made that choice. You know, it is what it is. But you need to pay mm -hmm. people a live uh, the, where they can survive. You know, you can't survive yeah. anymore. You have to pay a mortgage. You got to pay car yeah. notes and all this crazy extra bills and utilities. And they're, and they're constantly in the prices on food. So don't you, do you think that kind of would be like a resolution if they raise the minimum wage by a lot? Yeah. But I think like when they do that, the cost of living just going to go up. So it's going to y'all level out. It's the, the cost of living is high, like really yeah. high. You know what I'm saying? Like I just look at some of the houses, like from where I'm from in Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? People paying $1,500 a month for rent for a house that was built in 1905. That same 1500 in Atlanta gets you something so beautiful. And it's like, yo, man, we getting played, man. Like, we, we got freshly new bills for 2500 a month, 2000 a month rent. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, you're going to go to Buffalo and spend a million dollars on a house that was built in 1890. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. crazy. You Man, that same million, you gonna have a mini mansion or a mansion in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like that's why I like I that's why I'm happy where I'm at in life, where I'm, you know what I mean? Like Atlanta is like I just just growing up in Buffalo and poverty in the hood and not being able to um enjoy the the, the finer things in life. I'm thankful where I'm at right now. It's mm -hmm. a blessing. No, it is. And I want you to talk about your relationship with Lindell, because you have that song on there dedicated to him, R and P Lindell. So what was kind of your relationship with him? Man, shout out to my big bro, Lindell. Like, I grew up in downtown, in the town gardens, in the Jefferson Projects. That's downtown Buffalo. Um, You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like an older dude in my hood. Like, he was really influential in my hood. Like, to where, like, whenever we was going through our street wars, he was always the nigga that was on the front line putting in that pain. And, you know what I'm saying? He he had a, he had a big heart, man. And, you know, man, love to my brother. He passed away, you know what I'm saying, last month. And, like, it was so crazy because I had just seen him, like, probably a week before he passed away, I had came and flew into Buffalo and threw my dad a 70th birthday party. And uh, I I had to add it at our community center in our neighborhood. And bro pulled up. He had just got out of jail. He was kicking it, man. I'm like, yo, bro, you got to come down here to Atlanta. Come fuck with me, man. Like, we got to get you up out of here, man. We just got to get up out of here. He's like, bro, I'm going to come fuck with you, man. Da, 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 da. And, da, 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 da. and then, you know, I come back home, man. That shit hurt me to, you know what I mean, see, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, you took him up out of here and shit, you know what I mean? It's, it's fucked up, but uh, you know, I repeat, bro. His name is gonna always be lived, living on through me, through uh, a bunch of other people. You know what I mean? From the neighborhood and his family is all morning, and we're gonna keep his name alive for sure. Yeah, no, it, that was a powerful song. I love how you sampled and that you're going crazy on that. You had the microphone and the music video when you sampled French that's Montana's it. Sanctuary. That Man, was that's cool. one of my favorite songs from French Montana. Like that's one of my favorite beats in the world. I think she's so three. Crazy. Yes, sir, man. Shout out to French, man. I fuck with French. Yeah, you got to get that French feature. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely want to fuck with the uh, the guy, man. He he raw, and I and I just like what he did. He because French remind me of myself in so many ways. Like they not gonna play you in New York, so you got to take your shit to the South, blow up, and then come back home, and then they gonna appreciate you. 
do you feel the appreciation now? Because you still go back to Buffalo. I know you did the, the book drip bag drives. You've been doing yep, the school yep. supplies, feeding the community. So do you, you feel the love now? I'm not, I, I'm not going to lie. My city loves me, and I appreciate my city. But, you know, I'm a good person. You know what I'm saying? And I look out for people. So it's only right. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm guaranteed. But I, and they've been seeing me put this pain in for almost 20 years. So it's like they know I'm really, you know what I'm saying, dedicated to what I'm doing. And, you know, my city show a, a lot of love, like, you know what I'm saying? But it's just that I don't live there because I had to see more and I wanted more for myself. And there's only so far you can get in your hometown. So, you know what I mean? But of course, you know, it got, it comes with its hate. You know, it's always going to be some type of hate and negativity and shit like that. So, you know, it's a part of life. You know what I mean? You can't expect to be the man without having some type of adversary. So that's, that's expected. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to get hated, whatever it is you do, even if you're the great Michael exactly. Jordan has haters. I mean, Scotty Pippen. They hated on Jesus, bro. They hated on Jesus. Yeah. They hated on Jesus. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But, but I do say this a lot. Instead of having 12 disciples, you could split that in half even more. There's no longer all those 12 disciples. It's more Judas's absolutely. now. That, yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's hard out here, man, if, if, to, to choose your real, to, your real team because a lot of people wear masks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like, uh, you know, you just got to pay attention to the red flags or wait till the masks fall off their face and they become who they really are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned before, and, and I've heard you speak about it because you are a good person. You do good things. Do you feel as though yeah. being a good person, you get hurt? And, and not even just in just regular things as far as your relationship in music, but even like relationship right. with, with women. Do you feel as though, cause I heard you, uh, you're on your player shit on the album. You've been yeah, in your music definitely, and, and definitely. you kind of have to definitely. be that way, but do you feel as though yeah. being a good dude, you get hurt? Oh, I'm going to be honest. The world is in a different place right now. And I'm not trying to downplay marriages, relationships. I just think the climate is too crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like one, <laughs> one bad argument, it could be over. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just too many options. It's too many options. Like, you know, a motherfucker can come home and tell you they love you and they can tell you that it's only you, but they they got 30,000 people in their DMs. You know what I'm saying? They got, you know what I mean? Like, like I've heard this on other interviews and podcasts, in which is totally true to where, like, you know, I think about it. Back in the day, your girl only had the dude at work that's bothering her and you. That's all. So, you know, all, you, all your competition was the dude at the work. Now... At work, it's a million people on Instagram, another million people on Facebook, another million people on Snapchat, TikTok, too much is too much. And then it's vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we got a lot of options too now. You know what I'm saying? You got to think, man. We got a lot of options too. It's, man, as soon as I go on my Instagram, baddie, 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 baddie. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Go to my DMs, baddie, baddie. You know, it's like, it's, it's a lot of temptation. There's a lot of opportunity out there. So it's like, until you fully ready and ready to settle down, which is, you know what I'm saying? And you really ready to say, I can really cut off the rest of the world for the rest of my life. I don't think you should get in a relationship or get married because it's, it's, it's volatile. And I don't damn sure don't think you should be trying to worry about a relationship if your finance is not together. Because mm. most people is living through Instagram. So like, you know what I'm saying? Most of these women want what they see on Instagram. He just bought me a Lamborghini. He bought me a Birkin. He bought me an AP. You know what I'm saying? They want, they want, the, they want the life. They want the life. She, you know, a chick can say that. Oh, I don't really care about that stuff. Man, don't let her lie to you, pimp. <laughs> they want the life. Cause let a man, let a man come into her life trying to provide that, and and she gets tired of you struggling and trying to take care of responsibilities, and they gonna get tired of that sooner or later, and go, they go, you know, the temptation might, you know. Yeah. Like, it, man, it, might come fuck a cake boss now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's real. Uh, it's how real. did you get the title for Cake Boss? Because this is your label. This is the thing that you're building up. So where where'd you get the name right. for it? Well, um, you know, when I was in the streets getting money like around 20, 2010, um, I got the name in the streets of Cake Boss. You know what I'm saying? I was in the streets getting money. And then I just turned it into a label, Cake Boss Life. So I'm like, this is a way of life. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Get the cake, be a boss. And it's the way of life. You know what I'm saying? It's the way of life. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's about, man. That's yeah. what we own. Yeah. That's now are you on that type of time? Like Usher? I think you said that Absolutely. in Mason Slow. I'm definitely you are on that time. On there. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. It is what it is. Like I, I have rules to it. If you're not my family, you're not one of the homies, she 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 for the world, chick. 
<laughs> she for the world. And if she go, you can't be mad at me. You gotta be take that up with your girl, bro. Like that means something's not right on your end. If she's if she if I'm able to do whatever I want, do you I'm feel able like to put her on the flight? <laughs> do you feel as though there's karma? Do you feel as though sometimes you, there's karma with that or no? Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. I'm single. I'm single, but I'm dating. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I got love for you know, I got, I got a special person in my life, but I'm still single and dating with mm. that special person, and then you know everything else is just, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> but, but I'm just honest though. That the thing about me, bro, and how I'm successful with dealing with women at this good day and age is because I'm honest. You know what I'm saying? Currently, right now, bro, I'm focused on building these empires. Yeah. I can't. I was married before. I'm divorced. Currently divorced. Oh wow! I didn't I even try, know. That. I tr- I tried to sacrifice. And being in marriage, but that shit distracted me from the ultimate goal that I had since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So like now I'm continuously focused on building this empire. And then once I get this empire where I need it to be, then I can focus on settling down. You know what I'm saying? I got yeah. 50 million in my bank account, 100 million in my bank account. I'm cool. I'm cool. I could set up generational wealth for my families for decades to come. But right now I got work to do. I ain't got 50 million. I ain't got a hundred million. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even got 20 million yet. So, you know, I got things to do. Yeah. But you know, it's crazy because you got this reality show going. It's just for the yeah. entertainment purposes only because you got for the love of Ponzo. You got the season two coming this summer. You're yeah. going to be filming it. Yeah. Season yeah. one, I heard the the winner because you nothing scripted except for like the kind of like the the contest. I think you did that yeah, prior. Yeah, exactly. I did that prior. Yeah, I, I came are up with are you looking for something? I, I feel as though like you, you're saying this now, but when you get to the reality show, you're, are you just doing it for the entertainment value or is it that you're, you might be looking for the right one. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Not looking for nothing. Not looking. You never know what can happen. Yeah. I'm optimistic. Right person come into my life in the universe say that this is her. Well, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't argue with the universe. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the God up above, I can't argue with that. That's where it's meant to be. Well, you know, we doing that. You know what I'm saying? We're we going to shoot our shot and see what happens. Round, the first season, you know, I, you know, I, I tried the poly relationship. It didn't clearly work out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, hey, we're going to try it again for part two. Yeah. It, it, and it, originally the network came to you with wanting to do a documentary on your life story. Have you thought, right. have you thought about revisiting that at all? Because I think you have a, absolutely. you have an absolutely. interesting backstory. Yeah, a- absolutely. But I want to get a little bit more bigger, a little Pause. more, no diddy. <laughs> no, Pause, no diddy. <laughs> no, are, is that, are we really, are we really running with that phrase now? Yeah, or is bro, that, is they that... running with it. I oh, can't, like my, homie, man. my homies in Philly got me on that, man. I, I, I got some homies out there in Philly, man. That's where it actually came from. The, the homie Quilly. He actually, you know what I mean? He actually pioneered that on the DJ academics uh, interview. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's the, I don't know, I guess shit, all the shit that's going on with Diddy, I, I guess uh, you know I mean? that's the new swing though. That's crazy. Oh man. Who would have thought that in 20 years before know, this right? happened that we'd Sheesh. be saying that? It's unbelievable. Sheesh. Yeah, man, his legacy tarnished. I feel bad for the bro, but I can't feel bad if it's true. I yeah, don't if know it's, if it's true, true. yeah. I, you know what I mean? I don't feel bad if it's true. It's like, come on. But, you know, we've been hearing these stories about people doing wicked shit in the industry forever, so. You know yeah, what I'm and, and like, the Nickelodeon stuff's getting exposed now. You Oh, yeah, Nickelodeon, that. Disney, and all of that. I'm hearing yeah. about that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and rightfully so. These guys around and these these kids, these pedophiles, really get these guys out yeah, of here, that's man. The get the Would you let on. your kids act? Would you let your kids act? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just had my kids star in my first movie that I oh, just wow. the Hustler Dreams. So you <laughs> you're know, probably better I'm, off but, keeping it in house. You know. Yeah, but I'm 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 not letting my kids do nothing unguarded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know it's a wicked world out there, and I know that you know what I'm saying like I had to go through the streets I had to go through the entertainment bullshit of you know what i mean dealing with different scammers that's not who they say they was and have to go through different pitfalls of being an independent artist you know what i'm saying so i went through all of that so that they don't have to mm. no that's important and when we look at the music side of things because you were inspired by i was hearing a jada kiss dmx jay-z and you like drake yeah drake yeah well Jay-Z. dmx you like because yeah. he's so real dmx was a real person yeah. and you know like and, and I understand what he was going through, you know what I'm saying? Like, dealing with the addiction. My mother went through that, you know what I'm saying? So, like, 
I understand that. But outside of you take that out of it, DMX was a real person, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I like DMX because it wasn't just about balling, you know? It wasn't just about balling. It wasn't just about, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't just about the streets. It it was It was more so about, it was more so about, you know what I'm saying, his real life, his mm. real, you know what I mean, different things that he was going through. So that's why I, you know what I mean, I fuck with X, man. X was a real person. And he was really like that. You know, yeah. most of these rappers are not really like that. Like, I done been around them. I done seen how they is off the camera. You know what I'm saying? When the beat go off, I done seen how they really is. So it's like, I respect DMX for being a real person. You know, Hov, he's an icon, man. He's the ultimate hustler that, you know, everybody want to champion. And want to be like, because it's like, yo, he made it from the streets to, you know what I mean? He done took it over to corporate offices. Yeah. It, which, yeah, he he did the unthinkable and he was able to master it. it. Drake, what's your thoughts on everything going on right now since he's in your top artist? What's your thoughts on everything going on right now with him beefing with Kendrick and all that? Man, I'm a, I'm a pick Drake over Kendrick. I'm not really a Kendrick fan. You know, I, I never got in the car and said, yo, bro, put that Kendrick on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never did. You know what I'm saying? And that's no disrespect to Kendrick because the boy got fired. But it's just not, that's for them people that graduated college and, you know, live a square life. I didn't do that. You know mm. what I'm saying? And Drake, I, I mess with Drake because Drake a player. I'm a player. So like, I, that's what I get. But when I want that life that I grew up, you know, that's when Jada Kiss and them boys come in. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit likes some Kiss. Like, Kiss, Kiss is like, I feel like Kiss is from my neighborhood. I mean, when I listen to Jada Kiss, I feel like he's from downtown Buffalo because the shit that he rap about is like what we've been through. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's he a real artist. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite Jada Kiss album? Uh, Kiss of Death. Kiss of Death. Still Feel Me is my favorite Jada Kiss song. Mm. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Are you looking there right now? Do you have that song in the vault that's going to surpass Rich Lit? Um, see, what I, what I do is I just put the music out. Mm. I don't even look for it to blow up. If it blow up, it blow up, bro. I'm not even looking. I'm not chasing numbers. I'm chasing feeding the people that really support me. I don't even care. Like, I don't never have to be the biggest artist. As long as I keep, you know what I mean, supplying my fans and people that really, really care for what I'm doing, that's all I care about, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all I care about. As long as the people that's for me, that's who I want to please. The rest of the world, I don't care about that, bro. Yeah. No. And if one of them songs do take off, boom, bigger than Rich Lit, because Rich Lit, that was just me having a good time one day in the studio and the vibes was there and, and that shit just like poof. And I was already in Atlanta where that song blew up at first. So it was like, man, it was perfect timing. Yeah. And even with that, you were getting, it was in the movies. We already know, we talked about that yeah. earlier, but you were getting booked solely off. Of I was getting booked crazy off of that. That shit, mainstream radio, mainstream college radio, you know what I'm saying? Tours, you know what I'm saying? Bookings, all type of shit happened. I got a sponsor deal off of it where I was, I got a sponsor deal to wear black jockey clothing off of that song blowing up and the popularity went crazy. Crazy. What would you kind of say as far as advice to artists out here? Would you just say, you know what, just invest in yourself instead of just yeah. constantly trying to prove you're something to a label or you look at it as you got to do what's best for you? Um, I would say, man, make sure this is really what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't just do it because, oh, I'm going to do this because, man, I'm going to get the ladies or... I'm going to look cool. I'm going to get some likes. That's the worst decision you could ever make. That's one thing that, I, and I actually hate people that, that, that do this for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this is not your real passion, go do something else because this is hard work and the money might not come like you think it is. Don't get caught up thinking that these rappers is rich. I know most of your favorite rappers in real life and they poor and they struggling and they trying to make it just like you. So don't be sitting at home on your Instagram looking at these people's lifestyles thinking that they better than you. They really not. It's only 90% 90, 90 of music artists are struggling financially. It's a small window of people that's really actually eating off the music. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, it's the, and, it's, and, that small, and out of that small people, I guarantee you 100% of them got other business and other revenue streams that's actually keeping them afloat. Mm. Yeah, you got to do other things. If you're just tied you down to do the other music. things, man. Yeah, yeah man. You got to do other things. And you got to do what works for you at the end of the day. The music business can only take you so far independently. Like, you can only go so far. You think these people on these big platforms just going to let you get on top of the playlist, on top of the charts, on top of every 
uh, showcase or platform or, you know what I mean? You think they're going to let you get all that without being a part of their business, without them getting a piece of that? It's not realistic. No. So make sure you're being realistic. Being independent is only so far you can go independently. You're going to have to partner or sign with a major in order to get worldwide. Because that thinking that you're going to wake up tomorrow and go viral and it's going to change your life, that's really capped. That's not really how it go. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's not really how it go. And then, you know, it's, the album sales is capped these days too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to look at the industry, man. It's, it's not really, it's not really, really doing what you think it's doing. A lot of this shit be like capped and padded numbers just to make it look good. Yeah. It's it's all fraudulent and just you, people, yeah. it's manipulated yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would say just build your own community, man. Focus on them. I don't care if it's a hundred fans. I don't care if it's a thousand fans. Just focus on them. Forget the rest of the world. Forget the the award shows and all of the fake accolades. Just focus on those people that support you and keep growing that number. That's the best key to success ever. That's big. Yeah, that that's a major tip. As far as the reality show goes, how difficult? Because I know you're inspired by Flavor of Love and all those VH1 shows. It's it's your mm-hmm. spin on it. But how how hard is it to really make a reality show in this day and age where every day is a reality show? And social media is just one big reality show, just different channels. Absolutely. So how difficult I mean, is it to have a reality show in these times? It's very easy because that's the thing right now. But you okay, know, yeah. me, it was it was very entertaining, man. I loved every part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like. It got rocky some of those nights, you know what I mean, when the the, the 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 fights was breaking out and the arguments and all of the craziness was going on. But overall, I enjoyed the experience. And I appreciate the ladies that did come and that did get casted for the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, But the next one, we're about to do it bigger and better. Bigger and better. Bigger and better. Absolutely. Bigger and better. What do you think the future of Tubi is? Because Tubi, it's ever since, because I, I had it on my TV, but then as soon as I started watching the, the free movies that were on there, then you started hearing about all these people that are on here independently doing it. Then they put mm-hmm. the, made, you got the mainstream movies on there too. Right. And then your movie blew up on there. It, yeah. what do you, what's the future of Tubi? You think this thing is going to get bigger than Netflix perhaps? Um, I think it's just in line and to do the same thing Netflix doing. It's just like a couple some years behind. Well, you know, the, the owners of Tubi, they sold to Fox, so Fox own it. You know what I'm saying? They sold yeah. to Fox Network for like half a billion dollars or something like that. So, you know what I mean? Fox is behind it, so all they're going to do is just keep pushing the content, man, and keep, you know what I mean, getting a sponsorship and add dollars off of it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, shout out to Tubi. They gave a lot of independent, you know what I mean, filmmakers and producers an opportunity to showcase their talent when nobody else was giving us those type of opportunities. And they put you in front of real eyes. Like I, I was just in a movie, um, and it got over eight million, eight million views, streams in a year. You know what I'm saying? A movie I'm in got got viewed over eight million times. You know what I'm saying? That's just one movie. So and then it's like it's real. You know what I mean? So like, shout out to Tubi, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that's real. And you get the movies there. Watch them. You got to watch a couple ads, but that's okay. You, you just look at the movies for free. So that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Can I Live? I love that flip that you did on Jay-Z song. I know we already know Jay-Z's a main inspiration, but that was one of my Absolutely. personal favorites off the new album. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to my brother, A.K. Reed. He actually is the director of Conflicted and Pure Finesse. Wow. So, yeah, he in the movies and the music as well, and he's another Buffalo native. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to bro on that song. Yeah. What's next for you, man? I know we got the reality show. We got the movies coming. You got you, Are you going to be Dipping in more to the music now that Rituals is out, or you're kind of just going to let this float and just focus on the, the movies and reality show? Um, I'm pushing, bro. I'm just dropping content, content, content. Then I got my artists, they dropping. And I want to, I really want to, I want to go crazy with the movies, though. Like the yeah. movies, it's, 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 I see what's going on. Like I see, like, what, 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 the, what my team, my new team that I got, man, I got some big things in the works, man. We about to really take this billion dollar business right here. This a billion dollar business right here. This Tyler Perry money. Yeah. Yeah. That that movie should be different. One movie they could call you and say, Hey man, we got ten million for you for this one movie. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we got ten million for you to shoot four movies. And they're long shoots, but hey, that money's worth it. And then if you love doing Absolutely. it, it's a passion. Absolutely. And then I'm getting better and better. Like each year I want to sign up for a different acting class. You know what I'm saying? The the, the challenge myself. You know what I mean, That's do acting about. classes really help you? Do you think that Absolutely. they really? Yeah. Yes, because it's like if you just coming off the street thinking you're acting, it's different little small things that 
that you're going to learn in acting school that's going to change your shit up mm. drastically. Drastically. No, I believe acting it. Acting school teach you, acting classes, you know, show you how to tap into a different bag and a different element in these movies so that people can feel the energy. You got to get into a movie with Denzel or even Mike Epps. I heard that those are your Man, two influences. All of, all of those things is on my bucket list, bro. Like, Morgan Freeman, Samuel Jackson, Mike Epps, my boys, man, like shit, man. Like who else? Tom Cruise, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, who else? What's my other boy name? Uh, I can't think of his name right now. You like Mark Liam Wahlberg. Neeson? I know Liam Neeson. <laughs> I know you on, have the man. name on the new Both. album. Liam Neeson is a gangster, man. Like he's oh, you like gangster. him? Yeah, he's a gangster. Oh. You gotta think, man. He's he he is a gangster. I like him, man. He raw, man. I think he sucks, he but that, that's okay. I'll you really don't like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, of course, we know his movie and his scripted, but every movie he just like. He, I like I like people that. He's talking, but he about that action. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's a movie, but you know what I'm saying? I just like that. He be getting it done. He be getting it done. Yeah. What do you mean be getting it done? <laughs> but you're yeah. you're going there. what's a role that because i know you said that you don't want to play a snitch but what, what's a oh, role, no, really. what's a challenging role that you would want i and i get why you wouldn't want to play a snitch but what's a challenging role that you want to pursue um right now i, I just did a um i just did a a, a love a, a drama love story mm. you know what I'm saying? like poetic called justice wedlock. yeah something like that called wedlock with my homie king june he down here in atlanta he filmed, he got a bunch of movies out. I'm in Hot Girls with him. Um, and I'm with Ma- and Make It Rain that's about to drop and Wetlock about to drop this year too. So like, um, I just want to do stuff that's not just street movies. You know what I'm saying? Because most of my movies, I'm a gangster. I'm a dope boy. I'm a robber. I'm a shooter. I'm a killer. A thug. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's time to show my range. Yeah. Would you do a horror yeah. movie? I actually was in one called Seven Churches. You know okay, yeah, yeah. But I had a small I had a small role in that. And uh yeah, I'm I'm open to anything but homosexual roles and it's nothing against the um, you know, the community, respect to whatever anybody wanna be what they like. But for me, I just don't want to do none of those roles or no snitch roles. Those are just things that, you know, that's just not what I'm into. Comedy. We already comedy, know that definitely. with the reality shows and everything. Comedy is definitely something. gotta be with comedy because comedy making you laugh, that's good, that's good energy and that's good for your health. Yeah, we need more of that, especially during these times. It's you know a lot yeah, of sure. with the mental health crisis that's going on out here. You could see how it's affecting everybody on social media. It's crazy. Yeah, it's deep. It's definitely deep. It's wild. Ponzo Houdini, is there anything else you would love to let your fans know about the new album that we didn't talk about, Rituals, or just anything else that you have on the way that you want to mention before we wrap up? No, man. I think we covered everything, man. Shout out to everybody that's been supporting me. Shout out to new supporters that's going to come from this interview with my boy, DJ Mad Max. Man, we locked in, bro. You already know we're locked in. A shout out to your management, too, for connecting us. We got to stay in touch here, see if we can get some performances going here around the tri-state area. Because I know you want to come back up here. You're looking to come back. Yeah, man, I'm trying to tour over there, man. I got to come to the you know, up that way to come tour, man. I'm definitely ready, man. So, you know, let's put it together. Yeah, let's see what we can do, man. And, you know, let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter. I think it's just at Ponzo Houdini. Yep, at P-O-N-Z-O-H-O-U-D-I-N-I, at Ponzo Houdini. Follow me, connect with me. Make sure y'all go get that new album, Rituals, on all platforms. Make sure y'all at me and let me know which songs y'all liking on there so I can go shoot videos if I already don't got a video out to that song. And uh, new music on the way, too. You know what I'm saying? We working, man. It's constant content. Hustler Dreams movie on the way. And also, you know, the reality show for the love of Ponzo, too. Man, we working. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Ponzo Houdini, thank you for coming on the show again. Anytime, you're always welcome. We're locked in. And enjoy the rest of your night, my all right? Guy. My guy, likewise, brother. You already know, man. man. Salute.